So, you know, whenever you're like listening to music, like, do you all hear the instruments or like the harmonies or the lyrics first? That always like baffles me. Cause like sometimes when you hear a song, it's either just like the melodies are catchy or mm-hmm. the lyrics grasp mm-hmm. you in. Mm-hmm. But for me, by default, I would hear like the sounds first and then the lyrics come after. But I'm pretty, like there are people who pick up on lyrics like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like immediately like, if the beat sounds good, like if the music's good, like I want to see what they're saying. Like music is first for me, definitely. Like on on the on the forcing perspective of that, like from from a person that listens to melodies, it's like, like for example, uh, uh, Biggie on um, Funk Machine. Uh, what's it called? Funk Machine or something like that. Machine the Funk or something like that. So you want to be the way he raps in that in that like little song. It it matches with the snare and kick. So I would hear lyrics based on the rhythm yeah, and I'll click okay. to it and stuff like that. But the first thing I would hear is just the drums first. So you want to be hardcore with your hat to the back, talking about your gats and the raps. And then it's like, you just just clicking on those beats and it's like, yo, and then you just feel the rhythm. Boom, and then just going with that. So, but people, they hear the lyrics too. And it's like, oh dang. Oh damn! Like you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. Music. I listen to the lyrics first, and then I listen to like all the yeah. other stuff. I mean, for me, it's it's lyrics, but that's just because I'm a I'm a writer. But like, I'd be interested to hear everyone's thoughts on that. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of The Panel. Today, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about music in general, but like, before we start, I wanna give a little bit of an update. Uh, we got a new video on my band's uh, YouTube channel, link in the description, go check that out. Um, we got some exciting stuff, we're gonna be recording an EP soon, so be lo- on the lookout for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, check out uh, Jericho's uh, Bandcamp, it's uh, right, right, right below. And uh, link in the description also. Uh, he's uh, making some good music. Just started. Uh, did a, you did a remix to your? Yeah, it's unreleased right now. Well, it's not technically a remix. So punch it. That's the current track that's released on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. But um, I'm doing an extended version of it. So that's gonna be out soon. Not sure when, but give it a heads up. So yeah. Cool. Anything y'all want to plug? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. We all in the same. We all in this together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, for also, Sean and I are planning on uh, going to New Orleans soon. For a, uh, tell them about this. Uh, oh, for uh, for the double upload, the juicy, juicy double upload, the scarce double upload. Yeah. Um. So. I enjoy cooking just as much as the next fellow. However, there is a special recipe that my family has. It's for a baked macaroni and cheese. Um, there is a an ingredient that cannot be found anywhere except in New Orleans. Plus, I'm pretty sure you just you're using me for my my connect with Elmer's Chewies. <laughs> yeah, like the only reason why we're friends is because. Um, he hooks me up with Chiwis, so... Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what Chiwis are, trust me. You just know. Was that the one on 59? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like, they're like Cheetos, Cheetos, but crazy. Uh, like, they're flavored Cheetos. It's it's delicious. Uh, like, oh, okay, I remember you talking yeah, about it. It's like the Lay's, but uh, they have like the different yes, flavors and stuff. Yes. So basically what we want to do is we want to go, go up to New Orleans. Probably going to be vlogging that. Go on a road trip, you know, mm-hmm. explore the city a little bit, um, get some ingredients, and uh, cook some bomb food. So, you know, look cool. forward to that cooking video. It's gonna be great. But um, anyway, so it's about I, to be Cajun amazing. Yeah, dude, <laughs> it's gonna be. It it's so good. It ends racism when you eat it. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was told that. Yeah. You hear that, North Korea? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Hello. So what? sorry. So sorry, my bite. <laughs> Please don't demonetize this. Uh, no, but we just want to talk a little bit about music today. Um, the basically like what makes a good song, and or what makes good music in general. First off, 
Um, because, you know, when you listen to music, it's, it's one of those things that, like, music has, like, an ability to move us, like, emotionally, just, like, mm -hmm. uh, music, in fact, shapes the way people live. Like, you have uh, a whole, whole genres of music, like, you know, scene kids, for instance, mm -hmm. like, they change the way they dress, they change the way they mm -hmm. think, like, just their attitudes, like, people's attitudes change, people's um, perceptions of the world change through music. Um, it's such a yeah. powerful thing, you know. Yeah. So like, I don't know. What do you What do you guys think? Like, makes a, like good music in general. The sound, like the the way they put it together, um, like melodies, words, the emotion they put behind that stuff is like. I just I don't know. I can go like into detail with how like a song is made, like. If I listen to one song, I can, I listen to literally every piece of it, mm -hmm. and I can like, I just know it's like distinct, it's just, every instrument plays like a, like a message, and I just love that about music, and I just go in, in depth, like I listen to a song like 10 times over and over just to understand it like a dissected. little more, yeah, yeah, just to understand it a little more, yeah, so, I mean, and, and it also has like the emotion that they put yeah. behind it. Well, you know, other than the, the other than the emotional and you know connection in, in the musicality of it, I think <laughs> there's a there's a, a part of music that it has to be it makes sense. So there could be a piece of music that's beautiful and elegant, and it could have so much soul and emotion to it. But if you don't keep it in the same key, if you don't keep it in the same time signature, mm -hmm. if you don't differentiate its portions, if you you know don't take things into account, that beautiful flower that you have, that art, is instantly just buried by manure. And there are people who like create beautiful works and it's gone in an instant because of, you know, just one thing that doesn't work. And to add on to that, like chromaticism, for example, like you have all these notes that can be played, but just because I, I'm a big believer like in music, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And like, just because, you know, there's this really cool scale that you know how to do on guitar or whatever, doesn't mean you should put it in there. Like, it's so much, it goes back to feel for me. Like, you have to mm -hmm. feel it and you have to, um, it, like you said, it has to make sense. And you know, there's sometimes where there's gonna be key changes, there's gonna be tempo changes or whatever, but does it make sense? Does it fit where the song is taking you? Does it take you on a journey? Does it like, take you on a roller coaster ride of emotion like how you know the way that it makes you feel and that's part of like part of that is delivery mm -hmm. what you were saying about like the emotion I mm -hmm. feel like depending on the genre too because like if you're listening to classical music you know that's like um, obviously a lot more subdued but there can still be like these intense emotional moments you know but like if you listen to like a rock band and the rock bands like really jamming out they're really getting into it <coughs> That emotion, that 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 uh, delivery, like um, Mute Math is one of the best bands that I've seen live as far as energy. There's bands, excuse me, bands like Alisana, like Under Oath, super high energy bands. Um, that you know their music is good by itself, but it adds so much more the way that they they deliver the music and mm -hmm. um, it comes through even through the recordings. Like even when it's not. Uh, you're not watching them live. There's so much emotion behind it, like you yeah, were saying, yeah, that exactly. like it comes through. It yeah, comes. You, it's you can tangible. hear it in the recording. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that has a lot to do with it. But. Yeah, totally agree. Um, but you know, as far as like a more definite definition when it comes to understanding music, it's like the art in the sense of describing time itself in the now. So like, you know, you can gather out all the sounds, all the rhythms in the world and create something out of it. And then that's, you, you syncopate that into a sort of like timing or tempo. And then you have this like thing like, oh yeah. And then like, once you get that rhythm going on, then that melody going on, whatever that is, you know, that, that starts to move people. And you know, like, you know, that, that that's like energy right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like speaking of energy, I don't know why we're having like, you know, stuff like, it's like, Music itself, if, if it was something that's tangible to the point to where you can actually use it something to power the world, and it does, you know, it's yeah. very powerful. It is. Sometimes you think like, oh no, we're just going to rely on solar power, but that's another story. <laughs> but, no. 
but yeah, like music, it's like um, even taking it into the most simplest form. Like um, I don't know if you see with most uh, with most um, mainstream songs now, it's just like simple. And it's like, man, I could have thought of that too. But you yeah. know, it's what's moving there. That that's energy, yeah. like. Yeah. You know, and then there's also like even even indie artists that you never even heard of, but they have so many intricate like talents and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, where is this? It's it's one of those little hidden gems that you see and that you have to find. And once you find it, it's like, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. I think that relies a lot on the individual, too, because like there's different people that bring in different flavors, like naturally just who they are. Like they can pick up a guitar and it just sounds way different than like someone else that picks up the guitar they just have a flavor to them mm -hmm. and that flavor is derived from literally them listening to the artists they like taking all of that putting it into a melting pot and creating their own style mm -hmm. you know so yeah um yeah it's really interesting like uh feel is such a big thing like feel and emotion and like the way that it makes sense but like what do you guys think makes like a good song like just a singular like just uh, like a standalone like you said taylor swift like for example like makes really like catchy stuff that's simple mm -hmm. but it, it, like so many people like it like and i guess like there's pop music and then there's like you know more intricate stuff that you have to listen to over and over it's not like an easy digest you have to like like you were saying like you listen to it over and over and you pick it apart yeah. and stuff yeah I think it's the melody that she does. Like she does a lot of really like catchy melodies, mm -hmm. and like hooks that get in your head. Yeah, exactly. Time. And then the curveball is the lyrics that people can relate to. <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, break up! Break yeah. Up, yeah, that's the main thing. Girl, break yeah, up. Hell yeah! Like, you know, it's like, it's wow. like the perfect yeah. recipe. Yeah, yeah. It's like a fishing perfect. Hood, right? it's, yeah. it's a marble cake. It's a so corporate it's recipe right there. That is a perfect. Let's throw in pretty. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> relatable <laughs> and yeah. catchy catchy yeah easy to play Taylor throw some trap snares in there throw <laughs> trap snares sketch <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for her to get on that remix that's gonna be so good the team goes okay uh, never mind uh, but yeah just like oh d by the way um, so Taylor Swift and a lot of these artists a lot of people don't know this but they actually have um there's like a group of people that write a lot of the the pop songs i forget their names but mm -hmm. like a lot of the famous pop artists like they have um writers it for example yeah, it Sheeran Sheeran, yeah. writes his own justin stuff. bieber's yeah he Black writes justin bieber's music yeah he, he does write justin bieber's uh so, well, some of them. well like his late stuff i don't know yeah. but i think his early stuff like usher kind of helped him a yeah. little bit yeah. um but i don't know if he's still even on that record label i have no idea um, <laughs> i don't keep up with yeah but i do know like justin. like uh, Ed Sheeran writes pretty much all of Justin Bieber stuff. Right. Um, One Direction is something else. And you can wrote. feel oh, that, yeah, like yeah. you can feel that in the what's that song? The the Justin Bieber song. Um, the is it too late not to say sorry? Is it too late not to say sorry? Well, there's like da da da. That's like an interval that Ed Sheeran uses a lot in his songs. If you if you go back to um, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Holistic Songwriting, oh, and uh, yeah. shout out to them. Go check them out. But um, he actually t breaks it down, and he talks about how like there's certain, like you were saying, like certain uh, melodies and certain notes that like they're just catchy and they hook you. But there's mm -hmm. it's almost like a formula. It's mm -hmm. almost formulaic at times yeah. for for certain. Um, it's like it's calling code. Kind of. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely. Yeah. And there's a, there are other YouTube channels like that. There's a, I don't know the guy's name, but um, he makes videos and it's always how to write an X song, where X is like Panic at the Disco or 21 Pilots or, you know, someone like that. And he does the, almost the same thing as a holistic songwriting. He does it in a more comedical standpoint. And, you know, he, he tries to, you know, recreate it. And he shows you, you know, exactly what they're doing and how they repeat themselves in every song that they write and you know he makes his own junky lyrics over the top of it and you're like god that sounds exactly like that why did i fall for that <laughs> and i mean i i think that kind of leads into into what makes a good song is it makes sense 
-hmm. So where, you know, you could put like a mathematical formula on it, you know, Ed Sheeran uses that interval, or Brendan Urie uses the th thesaurithized words, if I could even speak in English, words that you have to use a thesaurus to find. But, you know, and he throws them in with intricate timing and makes sure that everything is nice, neat, and perfect. And then everything else kind of follows. Or 21 Pilots, how they, they switch things up, but it's really kept in the same, like, yeah, I don't want to say the same key, but it's the same motions in songs. And you catch it, and once you hear it, you can never unhear it. And I, I think as a musician and a writer, you come across that as well, where you're like, well, we did this and this, and that kind of worked. I wonder if we could mold that into something else that will work as well. Mm. So I think in a, in a mathematical standpoint, it has to make sense. Yeah. Which is one of the things that I think makes a, a good song and with any song, whether it's you know corporate or not, it has to like physically make sense in, in music yeah. terms. That's like, you know, in addition to that, you know, that's like if you get reggae, really movementing, like really moving kind of like rhythms and all that, mm -hmm. and then you combine it with the the elements of hardcore metal, and it's like, how do you make something of that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. the idea is possible, but if that's something that could be marketable in a sense, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. That's it's beyond. But if someone's out there who knows how to do it right. <laughs> All means you, you're free to do that, but you gotta make it to where people is gonna listen to that, dude. So you yeah. be like, mm, t -t 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 that double bass, dude. Oh no. Yeah, our last night actually does a lot of good coverage of like any song, like country, rap. Like, yeah, yeah. Like oh, they do no. a lot of like Taylor Swift. Speaking of yeah, well, Post Malone, he's a rapper mm -hmm. right now, and he started integrating okay with this new like rap style, but he's starting to integrate more of like some sort of bluegrass kind of like, country mm -hmm. stuff in yeah. there. Yeah, his next album he stated is gonna be more country. Yeah, so I was like, um, go okay. flex. I really yeah. love that song. Yeah. Like, yeah, just want go flex, yeah, go to my teeth, teeth on my neck. neck. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I'm stone cold to flex with the squad, and I'm stoking up a check. Like, yeah, yeah. it's still a rap flow, but it's over guitar, and it's it's it sounds kind of country. And then they throw in like an 808 snare, and you're like, yeah, yeah. okay, I kind of hear it. I kind of hear the rap. Yeah, like, yeah, something like that. That made perfect sense. Like when I first heard, I'm like, yo, the the production and all this and stuff. Yo, that how they mended that. It's like genius. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, and one thing that you mentioned, like for example, reggae. Um, I think one thing that's really huge, just huge for to make a good song, to make good music in general, is dynamics. Because just having, like, for example, having to, I guess, explain dynamics, what I mean by that is, for example, you have a song that has the same volume, the same intensity, the whole song, it just kind of... Uh, it falls flat. Yeah, it falls flat. It becomes like you almost get pulled into a trance, and it's just like the same thing. Like, uh, you know, it's there's no. Um, it's hard to convey emotion, even when you're really intense. If it's monotone, if it's just one volume, one intensity the whole time. I think something that's important in songs that's the why they have bridges. That's why they have mm -hmm. chorus, pre-chorus, instrumentals, Man. because we're emotional beings. So there's <laughs> there's going to be parts where, like. Um, not necessarily that we're bipolar, but we everyone has mood swings, not as drastic as others, but everyone uh, can convey, like, basically having that, uh, that contrast between, you know, like a really intense section and then it, like, comes down and it gives you kind of like a, like a more subdued part and then maybe it builds back up, like, uh, dynamically. Mm -hmm. I, dynamics are so big into a song and, like, you said reggae, like, Silence, the use of silence in a song is equally as important, in my opinion, to just like just going. For example, reggae wouldn't be reggae without silence. Jump, 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 jump. That silence right there makes it. And for example, in, in metal, gent, you know, just have those, those, those breaks like wait. That makes it genre. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so like, just, like, like, silence is a perfect example of dynamics. And um, mixing that in, not necessarily, that's what makes a beat. If not, it would just be like a 
like a sound that just doesn't stop. You know, yeah. that's what the, the the way a beat chops up the music and it just it creates moments of intensity and silence in a really really fast manner. So um, dynamics is so huge. Like just being able to you know build a song up, come back down. Like classical music is just so that's what it thrives on because there's no unless they have an, an like an orchestra or like a choir behind them, but it's like they they're they're pretty much telling a story with the music, you know. And so like you feel the the emotion, the the cadences, the the um, the flow of the music is you know it's going up, it's going down. It's like it's engaging you. And so um, I think if uh, I think if uh, you know there's that dynamic there it creates a good song you know you can have good chords mm -hmm. but the way that you present them the way that you um even like ed sheeran you know you know he'll play stuff that's like like their chorus is really really intense and emotional and he's belting it like like his voice is just like you know really intense and then the ver the verses are just really soft and just like mm -hmm. mellow and so those, that mm -hmm. dynamic i think is really important thing. yeah what about like an album like what makes a good album well, I, I think with, you know, an album, obviously every song has to do, follow that same category. Not every song has to be a banger, or not every song has to be the song of that album, but either it's, they all kind of fit a, a similar mold. I don't, and I don't want to use that in, in a degradating way, where it's just like, oh, all of these are cookie cutter songs. That's not what I'm saying. Um, they all... They all fit nice and neat in a in in a particular like good box. Like this is my artistry box. This is everything that I think represents me as an artist, or us as artists, or us as a band. Mm -hmm. And there are people who do like concept albums where their entire album is a theme. Like Logic, he had an interstellar, you know, a an album that was entirely about two people going off into space mm. and their their journey and the, to me it's one of his greatest albums yeah. you know? and it's you just you listen to it and every single song makes sense and every single song follows that story which i think is is one of the reasons i like you know telling stories especially when i do any kind of like songwriting or or writing the book that i'm currently doing i like the idea that it follows a structure where the structure is a story and it is a beginning and middle and end. Yeah. And I think not only does an album have to do that, I think each song has to do something similar to that. And when you compile those together, it makes a good album. Yeah, that, that flow, mm -hmm. that uh, um, rhythm, that or, um, the way that you tell a story. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like albums that are themed. Yeah. Themed. Like that, yeah, they're themed and I like it when um, like Linkin Park, Linkin Park's has an album, uh, The Hybrid Theory, mm -hmm. where like when the song ends, the next one immediately like is connected with the last song that was played. Yeah, I like, love, I love yes, albums dude. like that. Yes, and I think Underworld has done some. Stuff yeah, like, like that. Define the Great Line yeah. is one of my favorite albums of all time, and that that was a gapless album. Literally, there was no gaps. Yeah, and I, every song flowed and from just, one to the next. Exactly, and that's kind of like yeah, I love that. That's yeah. like with August Burns Red Redemption album too, and stuff at that very at the very end when it goes back to the last mm -hmm. song. Yeah. But I, in addition to that, it's whole themed about like uh, I think they were portraying like uh, someone who's like struggling and having the redemption through I guess like in a Christian sort of theme. Mm -hmm. That, like how to go through that struggle and then at the end there's that com complete like surrender and stuff like that which is pretty cool like mm -hmm. that's that's from like that aspect as well like it's like one 42 minute long yeah, song yeah, yeah. I, I love that yeah. i love that yeah. so much and because define the great line is your favorite album would you say that because it there are no breaks in that there is no defining and there is no great line to define wow mind blown like right? <laughs> that's a good point no but like to me <laughs> Right? Yeah, to me, that, it's also one of my. I love that album. <laughs> that album is to me. It's almost like they did. It's everything an album should be. A good album to me should be one big, long, giant, complete thought. And it's almost like one complete, like one giant song, almost. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It's like a journey. It takes you on a journey. But like, it doesn't have to be like just a, a like theme 
as far as uh, like the story or the lyrics, mm -hmm. it could also be a theme as far as like a musical motive. For example, mm -hmm. uh, per Periphery, when they came out with their Clear album, what they did was they wrote the overture, the first song, which is, it's kind of like a, um, there's like some piano in there, there's kind of like the main, the main motive, the main idea. The motif. Motif, motive, uh, same diff. But they made that and then they, they took it and they said, they gave it to the band members, they're like, okay, you write a song with this motif, if you will, uh, and you write a song with this motif, and you write a song with this motif, and everyone just kind of went and did their own thing, came back to the band and said, okay, this is a song that I wrote based off of this idea. And you can hear it sprinkled in the other songs, the idea is still there, the musical idea, the, the melody, the notes, mm -hmm. but it's presented in a completely different way. That's a very like weird album because every song sounds so different from one to the other, mm -hmm. but if you if you really pay attention and dissect it, you can still see that mo motif, that, that idea, that, that melody in there, weaved in mm -hmm. there, but just presented in a different way, which I think is cool, like classical music, Beethoven, that's like mm -hmm. all about that. It's all about presenting that same idea. Or John Williams, like mm -hmm. with the Star Wars music, yeah. like you hear that same, da -da 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 -da, but yeah. presented in a different way. Yeah. Like <laughs> just like the depending the most, on the mood. Yeah, the most memorable yeah. motif of all time, and it, it goes. Everyone knows what it is. Dun 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 dun. dun. That's it. That's the whole motif. Yeah. And then later on in the song, it's, you know, da 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 It follows that same motif, that same structure throughout the entire thing, and it's used differently. But it's, everyone has heard, da 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 dun 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 Even if you take it and you go different ways with it, it's still there, and everything is referenced by it. And I think that's, mm -hmm. yeah, Motif is definitely a good, a good, another thing that makes like a really good album. Yeah. It's another way to convey a theme, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of times it's with the artwork, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, with oh, the yeah. lyrics, mm -hmm. uh, but in a way you're trying to, co con you're trying to create a co cohesive uh, thought, a cohesive idea, and um, present it in a way that's not boring, not mm -hmm. monotone, you know, something that's progressively... Which reminds me, progressive music is so beautiful. I love stuff that's not repetitive and just keeps me guessing. Like, I'm the type of person that I like... Um, like complex polyrhythms? Yes, and, and just stuff that, like... Uh, it's not like an easy digest. It's not like a quick thing. Like, you just hear it once, like, Taylor Swift, okay, I'm singing along already. You know, it's something that you listen to over and over, mm -hmm. and you're like, man, like... Like, I finally dissected this guitar part, but I need to go back and listen to it, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. But listen to the bass and see what the bass is doing. Mm -hmm. And like, it's constantly changing, but it makes sense, like you were saying. So, yeah. Um, so what's everyone listening to now? Like, I know with the talk of music, and I'm pretty sure everyone's in a, like a little scene of where they're like trying mm -hmm. different genres. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so for me, I'm like, I'm just experimenting with like rap and trap music. I personally, by default, don't like listen to rap music because uh, I don't know. It, it just sounds like you know it has that it has that same theme of just like you know like oh yeah, bust a cap and you know, like yeah. uh, money, 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 like you know it's all that stuff and then talking about girls. But you know what what in like interest uh, what got my attention about like rap music and then trap in general was just like. The production flow of like all the the kits and the drums and all that and the rhythm and it's like oh this is really like artistic and then and you the, just and the dank memes oh, the, <laughs> the, the dank memes the dank. it's yeah. so dank I'm like yeah I mean like but yeah like just the flow I I'm coming from like back from I'm more of like just EDM in general so like that's just drum and bass electro mm -hmm. um rum baton uh, Future bass, you know, future bass is where it's at right now. And, and I think it's like, there's this new thing, like I heard it was called Space Wave. So if y'all want to check up, check that out around YouTube, you'll find some stuff, but mm -hmm. you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But that's, I don't know if y'all are. Oh, yeah, I listen to everything. My 
EDM, rap, uh, country, like I can literally find anything in any of those like genres and like I pick out something like just that I like. Yeah. And that's what's so cool about I me, mean, even rap, like the, with the words, like the similes and the metaphors they use, like Oh, this just, guy freestyling, like it's something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, but I think all of us are pretty like well like uh, cultured as far as we listen to a lot of different genres. But yeah. like, I guess like what you were saying, like what what uh, what are some like albums that you're excited about, or what some bands that you're excited about right now, like or an album that's about to come out that you're just like, yeah, dude, can't wait. Uh, bands. I mean, I tend to listen to uh, Silverstein a lot. Like Silverstein's my my favorite <laughs> um i like our last night mm -hmm. um i listen to a day to remember pierce the veil like i just like i, I tend to lean, lean towards like metal mm -hmm. uh, double bass and stuff but i'm not really excited about like any albums i just wait till they come out i just like, let I look forward to, yeah like if i hear that they're coming out with a new album like that's what i'm like oh i can't wait like if it's gonna sound like worse different yeah, better. And it's probably gonna sound better. Like it's usually better. Yeah. Cause I, I'm not like too um, harsh. Like a lot of people are like too um, like critical. Yes, 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 critical. Yeah, and I'm I'm like I like it. Like I like the sound and. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. I like everything. I'm waiting on the Eclipse EP yeah. by. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> by who? <laughs> yeah. Sky Below. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> it, at the moment, I'm listening to a lot of like, I'm actually getting a little more into rap than than I used to. Um, I'm going back to some of the older like music that I listened to when I was like in middle school and high school, which is <laughs> that nostalgia stage where you're just like, I need to bring this back. Well, yeah, it's it's a little bit of nostalgia, <laughs> and and another part of it is just like you know when I when I like I have one of my favorite artists of all time say anything, you know. They have a couple of like really big, long albums, like, you know, In Defense of the Genre is 23 songs, and it's one album. Mm -hmm. And they have Menorah Majora, which is like another 26 song album, and it's just, like, I can go through and I hear, as a, as a writer, I hear all of the different structures and, and the story that they tell. So I, I look at that and I, I listen to it and I kind of I gain inspiration from seeing exactly how much of story you can tell mm -hmm. from you know from any idea, which I think has kind of it helps me write, you know whether that's music or not it just helps me write and I think that's I think yeah I'm just listening to a lot of like older stuff to to get me to remember why I love what I love to do, mm -hmm. and then you know I listen to new stuff to kind of see if I can integrate newer aspects of music that maybe I wasn't aware of into it and and see if I can make something beautiful out of it. So you look at the lyrics? Is what you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I did too, like when I said like I was like dissecting the song. Mm -hmm. Like when it when I play it over and over, I look at the lyrics like mm -hmm. just to I wanna know like what they were saying and how like what they meant by it. Mm -hmm. And so. then decode it, make sure it's not Illuminati. <laughs> Yeah, I was which like, is interesting because I'm like the complete opposite. Like a lot of times, a lot of times, I don't really care what the lyrics are so much, and I'm just like, dude, this, this, like this beat is <laughs> sick. It's dank. Yeah, Yo, <laughs> this beat is going ham right yeah. now. No, but uh, Sean is actually like a really good lyricist. Um, when our EP drops, you'll you'll be able to see that. But um, he's just really creative. He has a poetic mind. So, um, but yeah, what what are you looking forward to? Um, nothing too much. Mostly uh, by default, I'll just see what the next uh, Monster Cat album is. Oh, and dude, Monster Cat. Yo, like, I have, like, mad respect for these indie artists, man. Because, like, honestly, when it comes to ED EDM, just, like, you know, the culture itself is very repetitive. And it just comes down to when it comes to digital sound, it, it, you, some people, like, literally now in this day of age, you can literally buy a sample pack. And then basically sound like Getter or uh, Zed's Dead or all those like big artists like Diplo or Skrillex. And then just like, man, yeah, I made a song. But you don't realize like the whole engineering process behind it. It's like, you know, these people actually made it from like basic sign and square waves. And then they made something in a more like catchy tune to where people. And then that's how they started from the ground up. But the, front the frontier and what I'm looking for is just like, 
like new material of what these like other artists in the electronic scene of what they can crank up drollo for example like uh, another friend of mine introduced me to him but basically this guy like from what he told me was uh basically samples like raw audio from somewhere like manipulate the sound file to the point to where it sounds like oh you got a lead now like a synth lead or a synth bass like and unrecognizable it, and it's unrecognizable and then you compare it with other artists there it's not compared to with like what plugin that you're using on their their uh, DAW system just to make that file uh, or make that sound and it's like yo that's unique I mean yeah uh, yeah so yeah because EDM um, artists are always pushing the boundaries yeah like. and and on the flip side with the analog side so you got people with guitars and stuff you know pushing that theory to making something new you know you mm -hmm. always had like back then with the history of thing jazz was like was like blasphemy in mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. music theory but look we are moved just from the origin from jazz that's how we have hip-hop and pop music to begin with was from that so mm -hmm. i yeah. mean like why not there's something with the basis of theory and then finding new sound and then with that whole romance together you can make something beautiful and i mm -hmm. think that you syncopate that into time itself and make art of that that's music it's beautiful so yeah yeah i think like what i'm looking forward to the most is uh Right now, Tesseract is in the studio, and uh, their last album was pretty good. Although, I would say Altered State, their first two albums were the best. Their last album was still really good, but like, I'm just really, really excited about like what they're doing. Tesseract is really innovative. Like, They're kind of a progressive, um, progressive band, if you can call them that. Mm -hmm. But man, um, their, their bass tone... And there's their snare. Like I'm a drummer, and their drummer's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's so so good. Um, yeah, I'm excited, really faces. excited about. Like if he hits you in the head with a stick, you'd feel honored. Oh yeah. Like uh, it's it's the type of music that you listen to, and you're just like, like transported into a different dimension. You're just like, oh my god. Like you close your eyes, and you're just like you're there, and um, it puts you in the best kind of trance. Uh, for example. Uh, their song, well, dang, they have so many good songs, um, but, oh, I heard this uh, the, like, for example, you listen to Tourniquet, and it's just oh, like, yeah. oh, dude, it gets you, and then also, um, what, I guess, uh, Surviving, Survi well, yeah, I, like that, Surviving. yeah. I mean, I did. it's a good song, um, that one's actually more, one of their less progressive songs, it's, it's still really good, mm -hmm. um, I like, uh, for example, the whole uh, nocturne song, the the uh, with the deception. Oh, they have so many good songs. Anyway, I'm really excited about Tesseract. <laughs> what they're doing, uh, they're really being um, innovative in in a lot of ways. Like they're pioneering along with maybe Meshuga, the gent genre. And there's a lot of bands that are kind of following suit and and kind of going off of what they're doing. Um, I guess that would be the, the main thing that I'm excited about. I've been listening to a lot of Pliny lately, and um, David Maxim Mykic, and or Mitz, Mit, Mit, Mitz, Mitzit, 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 something like that. Mitzic, Mitzic, that's what it is. He's Serbian, so he has like a weird last name. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, just kind of like in that genre, there's a lot of creativity there. So that's kind of what I've been, what I've been excited about. Yeah. But. Uh, but yeah, we have like uh, music coming up. Uh, Nathaniel and I are gonna be uh, setting up the studio. Uh, we're setting up our studio area right now, and we are uh, yeah, it's called Benwin. <laughs> we are currently we're gonna rip off the floors, put in different floors. We're gonna paint the walls, put um, sound sound panels on the walls, and uh, just kind of condition it a little bit with isolation, a little bit with um, I guess uh, conditioning and stuff like that. We're gonna turn one of the closets into a sound booth and then swap out the door completely mm -hmm. we got a lot of things that we're we're, we're planning on but once we get the, that stuff set up i'm going to be recording my uh solo album we're also going to be recording uh the ep with the sky below we got a lot of exciting things uh jericho here is gonna he's like continuing to make good stuff good um electronic music um you know look out for him my buddy damon he's uh also making a lot of a lot of the music that you hear in my vlogs is actually uh damon he he right he's my go-to guy he's he writes a lot of music for me uh jericho too but um 
So you have really to collab here? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's Maybe. something soon in the works. I, I mean, I'd, I'd be down for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of time. It's inevitable. <laughs> but uh, I think that's all for for now. Like, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, this has been another episode of the panel, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Caller number one, you are live on the system. Go ahead. Yeah, with that robot, um, uh. <laughs> A shrimp fry uh, ride, a shrimp fry ride. ride. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Caller number one, what is your name? My name is Chen. I'd like to order the pizza, the boneless pizza, please. Uh, <laughs> this is a radio station right now. You're our live. Caller number two. <laughs> uh, hey, Rod. I, uh, I'm calling from, uh, from Seattle. You know, I'm listening through the iHeart radio app. I'm definitely not somebody that works for iHeartRadio. Yeah, I'm actually a legitimate caller. How are you doing today? I'm uh, doing great, doing great. So we got a, just another phone request or a, another uh, caller request yes, uh, or a song request. What do you want to play? Yeah, uh, you know, since it's a Saturday, I, I, I kind of want to hear a Miley Cyrus party in the USA. Caller number three. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!